So in today's journey of The Walking Dead, Kenny and I decided to go get some supplies for the leeches back at camp. However, Kenny wasn't the most hopeful person here because, man, does this does this guy not lift? Oh, <laughs> shit! <laughs> what the fuck, Kenny? You let me down. And luckily, there was this one lady who was very helpful. She decided to be a human distraction with these horde of zombies that were just gathering up on her. So this gave Kenny and I an open window for us to go inside and just get all the supplies that we can grab. Oh, this is perfect. We have a distraction outside, and I have to need time to grab all this stuff. And with enough supplies in our hands, we decided to head out, but not before these horde of zombies can like burst in the door and just try to kill us. But I had Mr. Sweet Home Alabama right next to me, right by my side to help Help me. I was just a defenseless man. Anyway, back at camp, we decided to tell Lily about our nice juicy ventures. We got lucky and let a girl get eaten out there. Yeah, we what? did. Some girl we are very lucky. screaming out of an alley. And she wasn't so thrilled about us leaving this poor lady to die. And you just let her suffer like what? Like bait? Yes, yes we did. If we're being completely honest, it was the most helpful part of this journey because without her, we probably wouldn't have gotten enough supplies for the entire camp. Lily doesn't see it that way, but you know, fuck her. Through this entire argument, we also discovered that someone has been stealing our supplies. That's right! What the fuck? How could they? I thought we were family, but I guess not. And just to stir the pot, I decided to blame Kenny on all of this. <laughs> Happy Kenny. Happy Kenny. I am on no one's side but mine. So therefore, I guess it is up to me to discover who this damn thief is. I will get to the bottom of this, and once I do, I will show no mercy. Do you come in here to give me hell or to coddle me? <laughs> I came here to tell you you have to chill the fuck out. You have to chill out. You think? <laughs> I could use your help. I want you to poke around. I could be a good detective. I was gonna do this all on my own, but unfortunately this annoying ass child was eavesdropping. So he wanted to help me. He wanted to be the Dick Grayson to my Batman. You're the greatest detective and I can be Dick Grayson, your ward. And I decided to say sure, because honestly you look like a dick, so why not? This annoying child and I played the world's greatest detectives and we were just browsing around the entire camp looking for clues. Now my top primary suspects for who can be the traitor in this camp are first Dick Grayson because only criminals return to the scene of the crime and I, it, I kind of feel like this little child is just trying to steer me off in the wrong direction so that I can't identify him as the culprit but I, I am certain that it is this little motherfucker right here but anyways uh ben i feel like he is the other culprit as well so these are my two primary suspects the only clue that was given to us was this broken flashlight lily assumes that someone is just delivering all our supplies in the middle of the night which makes sense because crime usually happens at night while investigating i did have to interrogate as much people as i could it was just not pleasant because unfortunately i fucking hate people well at least Lee does, it not me. It, trust me, I'm talking about the game, I'm not talking about my damn self. The first person I decided to interrogate was Carly. I've been thinking a lot about you. It's not her. But she did tell me this great piece of advice actually to tell people that I, Lee Everett, am a murderer. Which honestly, at first, it sounds like a bad idea. But if you really think about it, I think it's a great idea. I think I think that's a good idea. Then people will fear me. This is a perfect way for me to assert my dominance. Why would you not be scared of a murder? If I can kill one person, then I could probably kill another. In Lee's perspective, of course, not not in my perspective. It it's all in Lee's perspective, okay? I am I, I, I am not a murderer. Please, the gloves don't fit. The gloves don't fit. So once I told her, fine, I'll tell everyone, she gave me a kiss on the cheek, which basically means I'm pretty much in there, dog. It's only a matter of time before Lee claps cheeks but anyway i took her up on her advice and i decided to tell the entire group therefore everyone will be able to fear me and there is nothing more powerful than fear as we have learned through batman i told ben i told kenny and i told this lady and i told lily i killed somebody oh and frankly i think i have asserted my dominance amongst the crew so everyone will now know that once i find this traitor they will be my next victim but besides that amongst my investigations i was led to many dead ends and i was led to many questions all i found was just some chalk and some symbols on walls which eventually led me to investigating outside around the corner i ended up finding some supplies in this vent so the trader has been putting all the supplies in here and mystery solved right well not exactly because we still don't know who's the culprit i went to lily to tell her what i found but unfortunately a group of bandits decided to come in and they were very very pissed because <laughs> i had taken the supplies that they were supposed to get but it wasn't their supplies it was our supplies 
guys first, so fuck them. Lily told me to stall them for a little bit, so I guess I was the human shield. I stalled them long enough for Lily to just snipe this dude in the head, which was very well deserved because fuck you bandit. And now it was an all out war between the bandits and us, a bunch of helpless people. Oh no, they're dead. It's over for them. <laughs> I was just frozen there. After wasting a bunch of bullets on some pesky bandits and a horde of zombies that managed to get inside, we were off on another adventure. Kenny had managed to fix up the RV, so we had a mode of transportation, which was pretty cool. While on this road trip, Lily was poking at Ben because she believes that he is the culprit and also Carly. However, we did end up hitting a zombie on the road. That gave us plenty of time to step outside and really interrogate and poke this fragile man. What do I have to do? For you to trust me, I'll do anything! He's broken, Lily. I can see that. This had just turned into a giant shit show. Lily was accusing Ben left and right, and also Carly. Everyone was freaking out. Stop this! You're torturing him! No! Ben! Stop! Ah. Kenny was trying to get the zombie unstuck from the wheel, and Lily simply was just losing her shit. I think she needs mental help. But unfortunately, we're in a zombie apocalypse, so as far as help goes, she's fucked. So much so that she decided to bust a cap in Carly's face. Holy shit! Which sucks because now Lee can't get any pussy. Clementine had front row seats to this entire shit show that went on. Talk about childhood trauma. We took the gun away from her and I made the brave decision to just leave her behind because we can't have murderers amongst the crew. I'm a murderer? You've had Lee with you this whole time! I don't care what he did before! If we keep you with us, how long until you get me? I was trying to protect all of us. Which was, in hindsight, very hypocritical. Now Lily is just all alone, probably gonna die. Not really our problem anymore though. Anyway, now that we were finally off on the road, a new problem arose. Duck. Well, he's been a problem since the very beginning, but no, this time it's even worse because he's been bitten. What the fuck? Finally, we can get rid of him! The best thing to do now in this situation was just to pull over and get rid of this child, but his mother just didn't agree with me. No, she stated that this little boy is fine, and that she sees no signs of turning. Imagine this duck is the Ellie of the Walking Dead. Wow, psych, I don't believe a word of this. No, this little kid is gonna turn into a little shit. So the best course of action is to just get rid of this kid as soon as possible. But that is later's problem. Right now, the main problem we have in front of us is this damn train. It's blocking the road so we can't get past it really. So I literally spent an entire hour, probably even more, trying to figure out how to turn on the train and just get it moving. Man, this was the worst part, man. I kid you not, man. I spent an entire hour, maybe an hour and 30, maybe two hours trying to figure this out without looking up a YouTube video. <laughs> Pain. But anyway, once I had finally figured out what I had to do. Oh my god, it was this fucking pencil that was just so mad. Perfect. Should be able to just follow the steps to get the what engine. What the off. fuck? Sounds good. Now we gotta turn your brake. Let's go! After like an entire shit. hour of trying to figure it out, I finally did it. Oh, I did it. Hey, Kenny, we're loose. Let's get the fuck out of here now. This old man came out of nowhere and accused me of stealing his supplies, which, yes, it was me, but hey, man, you weren't here. Finders keepers. It's all good, though, because he is now part of our crew. And finally, we were off. Before we left, little duck was not looking so well. It was only moments before he could turn now. But Kenny was in denial. He didn't want to accept that his child was turning into a zombie. So he said out of sight, out of mind, and decided to sit up front, the conductor seat, as we ventured off onto the next adventure. Lee. Lee <laughs> oh, he's I coughing up blood. Right now. I wasn't having any of it, so I decided to confront Kenny and beat the ever-living shit out of him so I could knock some sense into him. And this eventually worked because we finally pulled over and it was it was time to get rid of Duck and it, ugh, this was the most happiest I have ever been. You do not know how amazing this was for me. Finally, getting rid of this kid. Unfortunately, no one shared the same level of excitement that I did. No, everyone was sad. Kenny's parents were both deciding who should be the one to old yeller him. But before they can even answer, I decided to volunteer as tribute. I'll do it. I'll do it. Because this would have been joy for me. And they took him off into the woods. And while I was explaining to Clementine what I was about to do, a gunshot was heard from the woods. So I ran as fast as I could, sprinting, only to discover 
Kenny's wife had offed herself. She probably just couldn't handle the pain. Whatever though, I, st I was still on a mission. And boy was I going to succeed on this mission. I told Kenny, hey man, give me the gun and I'll do it. And so my moment has finally come. You ain't gonna ruin this moment for me, Kenny. The pain, the burden, was being finally released from this world. And before you think I am a crazy man, please try playing this game and try liking this annoying little snot for just one second. I bet you can't. And if you can, well then, goddamn, maybe I might be a piece of shit. You sorry ass piece of shit. But anyway, Kenny was finally free from his burdens, with an S, because his wife is now dead, and so is his child. Think of it, in a zombie apocalypse, you don't have to worry about saving your kid or your wife, just save yourself, man. Every person for themselves, really. But anyways, off we were, to our journey again. And on this train ride, Clementine was feeling pretty sad, because Duck was dead. She was also sad because this old fart told her that she would probably have the same fate as Duck. And what the fuck man, why would you say that to a kid man? What's wrong with you? So I decided to step up and confront this man. Say it to me asshole. Once I had confronted this man, he honestly hit me with nothing but facts. He suggested I cut her hair and teach her how to use a gun. Think about it, if you have long hair it's easy for a, a zombie to just pull your hair man. So I was like, yeah sure, I'll, I'll do that. So there I was, being a dad, teaching her how to shoot a gun. She sucked, she really did suck, but after a couple shots, I think she could fend for herself. And then I cut her hair. Anyway, after being a father, Ben confessed to me that it was him. He was the traitor, back at the camp. It was me. Huh? I was the one giving the bandits supplies. I knew it! What? So I did the rational thing, and I threatened him. I could kill you. I... <laughs> Nobody can see us. I put the fear of God in this man, which was great because now he can fear me. And so the next opportunity I get, he will not be saved. Moving on, well, not really because there was a big tanker that was just getting in the way of our train. So we had to pull over a side or stop the train and figure out a way to remove this. And while we were doing that, we met a lovely couple. Truthfully, one of them was being annoying as fuck. But the next problem to solve was getting this shit out of the way. So Clementine and I went to the nearest... What is this? A house? A little train station? I don't know what this is. But we went here, and inside we were met with a bunch of zombies. I think I was the only useful person in this situation. Clementine really didn't help me at all. She choked, and I almost died. So was this training all for nothing? Perhaps. Maybe it was just a waste of time. But whatever. I got the job done. And then this lady walks in and just starts being a negative Nancy. You and an eight-year-old versus three of them, huh? We're just that good. We handled it. Yeah, it looks like. What if you hadn't? You're fucking. I'm gonna go make sure the so noise negative. didn't cause it. That's right, I remembered. It was her. She was the one who was being a bitch. She didn't like me at all. And you know what? I don't like her either. But anyways, I had finally gotten the tools that I needed to get this tanker out of the way. So with the help of this kind feller, we were trying to get rid of this thing, but a horde of zombies just came out of nowhere. So now time was ticking. And once we finally got the thing loose, off we were. My genius brain decided to throw this little, what is this, a propane tank or something on the floor so there could be a big boom. But this man and I were kind of fucked. How else were we gonna get down? I know, we'll jump. Yes. How dangerous could this be? This man, however, was not liking my idea. What? No way! So I decided to give him a little shove to encourage him. You son of a- <laughs> ah! Holy shit! Well shit, that was probably a bad idea, but hey, at least he can be a distraction, right? It's okay though, because his lady jumped off to go and save him. And so while they were running to get on the train, I helped this man out because that was the least that I could do. Right? He wasn't very happy with that, however, he was very pissed that I saved him instead of his lady. You piece of shit! She's a woman! Don't you know- And honestly, I was just fine letting her die. Hopefully, she can be a big distraction, but ah, fuck, she made it on the train. Well, at least they're both safe. Speak for yourself. My leg is spot. Anyways, nearing the end of our venture, Kenny and I had discovered that Clementine has probably been communicating with someone in Savannah, the place we were headed towards. Can't wait for you to get to Savannah, Clementine. I got your parents right here, and you be sure to find me whether Lee wants you to or not. Now, who the fuck? Who were these people? I have no idea, but we'll probably find out in the next episode of The Walking Dead. Thank you so much for watching everyone. If you made it this far, thank you. I appreciate you for watching the, these gameplays. Other than that, it has been I, Hooded Tui. Until next time.